Hi, and welcome back to our H5P tutorials. So this is the second tutorial on H5P, and right now I'm going to show you how to create an interactive video inside of H5P. Again, we're just going to use the H5P that is already embedded in Moodle. It's free, and you can upload video of any size. Um, just before I start, uh, I think that this is not only useful for making special videos for like laboratory practicals and things like this. I think that this feature specifically can be very useful when um, you just want to deliver a certain lecture to students. So for example, you have a lecture that goes through all the different slides in the lecture, records him or herself. Um, and then at the end, when the video is already done, you simply upload it and then at certain points where you feel like perhaps some more detailed explanation could be used, a quiz could be inserted, a link to a YouTube video could be inserted, you simply add all of these interactive contents. So let's begin um, with making an interactive video. Uh, I'm on a Moodle site, which I can edit. So firstly, of course, you want to turn editing on. My internet connection isn't exactly the best, but still you can see that even with my very poor connection, um, I can create all of these contents. So that's pretty good. And now we're on our Moodle page. Find whichever chapter or page you want to insert your H5P into. And I'm just going to put it right here next to the sample presentation, which we already created in the previous video. Again, we add an activity or resource and scroll down to the interactive content, the H5P. There we go. Check here that it's the H5P and simply click Add. And so our hub shall appear in every moment, in any moment now. Again, we can add a description. I'm going to add it just for the sake of it. Let's see if it's going to work. Okay. That's it, and I'm going to display it on the course page as well, just so everyone knows what's happening. Again, we scroll down to the hub. This is the central part, if you remember correctly. This is where all the magic happens inside the H5P hub. Um, just maybe a quick note, because that's not something we covered in the previous tutorial. If you already have an H5P file, which you perhaps created previously and you've downloaded it to your um, computer, maybe you have created it in a different uh, website, maybe not in Moodle, maybe you use Blackboard, or maybe you just went directly on the h5p.org website, um, and you've created this content and you've downloaded it to your computer, you don't have to create it again when you're trying to embed it into, um, into Moodle. You simply select this tab here, Upload, and you upload a file from your computer which you already have saved. So yeah, as it says here, you may start with examples from h5p.org. Um, yeah, but that, that's something that you can explore on your own. Right here, I just want to focus on creating content inside of Moodle. So here we go. Last time we made a course presentation and now we're going to work with an interactive video. So just click on this. taking a while to load. Here we go. Um, also, yeah, this is a nice thing that happens every now and then. It can give you a tour of the most important features of the interactive video. I'm just going to exit this. I would like to think that I already know about those features, but feel free to check that out. I guess it's a slightly quicker way of learning about H5P than maybe watching an hour long tutorial. But nevertheless, I want to show you a lot of details, exactly how you do things, just to make it as simple as possible. So here we are in the interactive video hub. The tour, if you want to access it, is right up here. But let's start the same way we would start always, with naming our little sample video. I'm just going to call it sample video. Um, and here we are. So this is slightly different in the presentation because you can see that you have 
these three steps that H5P has set out for you. Um, the first step is to upload a video. Um, we're gonna deal with this in a second. The second step is to add the interactions on top of the video. This is exactly the same as when you add interactions into a presentation. And then the third step is quite interesting and I think it's very useful and you should definitely use it. And that's a summary quiz, which is something that is going to appear when the student has watched the entire video, has come to the end, and now this little quiz is going to be there to check their understanding. And here you can insert different questions and the student is gonna get their feedback. And this is the same form of question as the correct statement. Uh, yeah, choose the correct statement is the summary task. So we're gonna deal with this at the end. So let's start with the first step, uploader. And okay, so first step is uploading the video. You can do it in two ways. Um, one of them is to simply link a YouTube video into um, into here, I'll, sh I'll show you in a second. And the second one is to upload a video from your computer. I've already showed you how to upload a YouTube video in the previous tutorial, when we uploaded the gel lect electrophoresis video um, directly into the slides. And here, we're just going to actually upload a video which is going to be a background for all of our um, other additional content and interactions. So let's do this. So first we click on this plus, and here we can see the two options. To upload a YouTube link, just go to YouTube, find the video you like, and simply copy and paste the link here. To upload a video, we will click right here. And now we're going to select the file that we want. So let me find my file. Here we go. I'm going to use this gel electrophoresis video. I'm going to open it. It's going to take a little bit to load. And here we go, we have successfully uploaded the video. This is just a blank video um, of basically what is actually the introduction to these two tutorials. So the video is only going to be consisting of four different pictures, I think. So it's, not, um, it's nothing special, but it's just so that I can show you how all of these different interactions work. So we've uploaded a video up here, it's here. You can change the video quality here, but you, you aren't actually changing the quality, it's just the label of the quality. So, um, But usually H5 features is it for you, so don't bother yourself with that. Here we go, that is, that is our video. Now the second step is to add interactions. We click on this tab, and here we are. Here's the play button, um, and this thing right next to it is a button with which you can add a bookmark. So let's say that your video is consisting of several parts. Let's say that first there's an introduction, then there's the main part, and then there's the conclusion. What you can do is that at the start of the introduction, you add a bookmark and you write down introduction. And then at the middle point, you add down the middle point. Let's try adding one of these bookmarks. Let's say that we want to add a bookmark just as the image switches from this. I think it's a or simply create the content directly on h5p coding experience to create amazing content just gonna pause it. there we go it's a 20 seconds and here how to add a bookmark is just click on this button add a bookmark at 020 yes precisely so we've clicked on that little add button there we go this bookmark already exists Let's see it now. If you wish to use H5P as a plugin for Moodle, feel free to either create your content on h5p.org website or simply create the content directly in your Moodle page. However, h5p.org has certain limitations. Firstly, it cannot be used independently, so make sure that all of the content is uploaded to Moodle, otherwise students won't be able to access it. Secondly, especially when making videos, there is a size restriction on how big the video can be. Hence, if you wish to use H5P to make a resource accessible without Moodle, for example simply as a link, Okay. So let's start adding some interactions. All the interactions are here at the top. 
You're familiar with most of them, except for I think this crossroad, uh, navigation hotspot, and label. A label is basically text. Um, there's not really much to it, but we can try just adding a single label right here. Now when you're adding any sort of an interaction into a video, there is one thing you always need to do, and that is set the display time. So for my label, sorry about this, for my label I want the display time to be at zero. So the display time is always in the format of minute and seconds. And I want it to be from zero to five seconds. Here we go. There we go. Don't forget to write exactly the number of seconds. Uh, it's not 55, sorry. Here's the option to pause the video as soon as the student sees this little label show up, but there's one little problem and that's, it's quite annoying if the video pauses every time an interaction pops up. Um, so I think it's better to just leave it unpaused and then the student can pause it when they want to read into something. Um, also, you're going to notice very soon that if you insert any clickable hotspots, the pausing of the video is automatic as soon as the student clicks on the hotspot. So that's not something you have to worry about. So I would usually just leave the video unpaused. And here we are going to write our little label. We'll just say this is our label. And we're going to click done. There we go. We have this little label here. Again, we can freely move it around if we want to copy it. We press this button and then to paste the exact same label. This is what happens. Let's just delete this one. There we go. So this is the label. The text is the same as it was before. Um, it's just that here it's automatically going to be displayed as a button. So if you want text to appear on the video as a whole, so not as a button, make sure to click this. Let's first create some text that is going to be a button, and let's say that it starts at zero again and it ends at 10 seconds. Um, and here, there's a label which is going to be displayed next to the interaction icon here, but the important part is this text here. So let's say, hello and welcome. Hi. So here you put the label in, and here you write the actual text that is going to appear. Um, we don't pause the video in general, and it's going to be shaped as a button. So here we go. And this is how it looks. The, you remember when we inserted the label, this is where it is. And now when the student is going to press this plus button, we're going to see our little text which we inserted. The alternative way to create text is to click here and add it as a poster. In this case, um, pausing of the video is somehow automatic here, but again, I'm not going to pause it because I believe that the students know how to pause it when they wish. Just let's just say this is poster form text. And that's it. Uh, also, just so you know, you can add some visuals here. You can change the background color or add some box shadow. So let's set it as purple. There we go. Click done. There we go, this is our little post-it note, our little text. So this is how you do text. A table, you just click on it, insert all the columns you want, all the rows you want. You can always just add it by just clicking enter. So it's a very simple way of making a table. So I wouldn't worry too much about it. There's also this little magic button, which helps you create a new table or add different properties to the already existing table. You can see this in your own time. So I'm just going to delete this because it's not a very common thing that I use. Again, with link, it's exactly the same as before. Don't forget to set the display time. But let's insert a link just so that you can see how well the video pauses when you insert the link. Let's say we want a link to h5p.org. Here we go. We're just going to copy this. And we're going to paste it right here under URL. We're going to title it H5P link. That's all. Click done. There we go. And the student is going to be able to tell that it's a link by this little image here. It's a small icon, but you can always just write next to it link or you can maybe write click here. And that's it. 
and now if you just check here you can see that we didn't choose pause video here because this would pause video as soon as the link would come up so let me let's say that it starts at five seconds and it ends at 10 seconds just for fun um, but even though you didn't choose this the video is still going to pause when the student presses on this link there we go so now we can just wait for this to come down to five seconds and we're going to see the link pop up here we go we got the link okay let's add some different interactions we can add an image which we're already familiar with um, there's again two options you can just add the entire image or you can just select it as a button Um, I think that one interesting thing here is that if a student is, for example, viewing this on a phone, um, Hi and welcome to our first tutorial this video on H5P. Is smart in this tutorial, we will go through how to use H5P in Moodle and what sort of content we can create. Then we will look more closely into creating an interactive presentation. So, let's begin. Firstly, to create H5P use for Moodle, you can either create a file in h5p.org and then add a link in Moodle, or alternatively simply create a file in just for fun. There we go. Sorry about that. Um, so yeah, we can now add an image as a poster. Let's just add the same image that we have used last time. Let me just find it. There you go. This is going to be our little image of the mountains. And again, you need to add the alternative text. Hover text is optional. I wouldn't worry too much about it. You can add visuals. You can add a box shadow if you want. You can unadd it. And click done. And here we go. We have our little image. Let me just check what the time is. Let's make the display time from eight seconds to 13 seconds so it's just five seconds here we go this is going to be our image now let's add an image for example as a button just so you can see how that works we're going to add the same image again we just clicked here as a button and again don't choose pause video because the video is going to pause automatically when the student presses the button add the alternative text which is mandatory even if you don't add it it's still going to be added into the like the image is still going to be added into the video normally but I would suggest you add it just in case the image can't be displayed by some computer we click done here we go so now this is our little image right here it's just a little plus button we're going to put it on top of this image or maybe just below it so that it's more clear um, yeah so this is this covers the images let's scroll a bit forward maybe let's scroll right here to where we put our little bookmark and here let's add a question you already know how to use all of these questions but let's let's create a statement one just so i can show you how it works again it can be a button or it can be a poster i personally prefer the poster um, now here, that's one thing that I do suggest. If you select for it to be a button, uh, I don't think you need to pause the video for it to work because as soon as the student presses the button, the question is gonna turn up and when the student answers, the question is gonna go away. So feel free to use the button. The only problem with the button is that it's not as noticeable. But meanwhile, when you use the poster, it's right in the student's face <laughs> actually because it's in the middle of the screen. Um, and the student can clearly see that it's a question. So in that case, make sure that you leave the video paused. You don't need to set much time for it though because it's going to pause anyway. And here we go. Let's just, let's just write our list of statements. Uh, again, remember the first statement is the correct one. So let's say correct, incorrect. And press done. Here we go. We're just gonna put it in the middle of the screen, just like this. And 
when the student chooses the correct answer, the progress is going to show to be one out of one. And this is how you add questions. All questions are exactly working the exact same way as they do in the presentation. So make sure to watch that tutorial first in order to exactly understand how to add in all of these different things. But now one thing that's different, and I think it's very interesting, is this crossroad. So crossroad is very similar to an anchor. You basically give the student a chance to go to different parts of the video depending on what they want. So now we know that one different image is here at about 20 seconds. And now let's find another different image. There we go. It's going to be at 50 seconds. Let's say that at the beginning, right at the beginning, I don't know, let's say after all of these images are done, here we go. We want the student to decide where the student wants to go. If the student wants to see the first image or the second image. And we're going to do this with this crossroad. Here we go. The display time is going to be from 15 seconds to, well, we can just set 16 seconds because we're going to pause the video anyways. So when the student sees this, link the video is going to be paused automatically. Just leave it paused here, it's the best. Um, now question text is going to be what you want to ask the student. So let's say that you want to ask the student if the student wants to see um, the methodology or if the student wants to see the results. So which, in this case, I'm gonna ask the student which image they want to see, which image do you want to see? And here you have the different choices. Remember that the first image was at 20 seconds and the second image, we need to set it up like this. Zero, whoops, zero minutes, 20 seconds. And the second one was at zero minutes, 50 seconds. And the choice set, this is the choice text that is actually going to appear. So the first choice, for example, if you were doing a laboratory practical video, the first choice would be methodology for example, or um, requirements, or ethical considerations. And the second choice would be, I don't know, results. But here our first choice is going to be image one, and our second choice is going to be image two. So all of the different choices, you can add choices if you wish, if you have multiple choices. You put in all the different choices, what they're called, and you need to give the student the exact time at which it starts, so that the H5P will immediately take the student to that part of the video when they select a certain choice. There we go. So display time can be short. Um, you write the question that you're posing right here, and then all the different choices you enter here as a choice. You can add as many of them as you wish. There we go. Click done. And this is our little crossroad now. It's going to appear just here. Let's make it a bit bigger. This image here is maybe a bit annoying. Let's see what time we set it for. Yeah, let's set it for the same time as the previous image. If you remember, that was from five to 15 seconds. There we go. And here we have this little crossroad. That's it. The only other thing that you can do here is this navigation hotspot, which is very similar to this. It's just that in this crossroad, you basically can give the student different options. So you can give them an option to go to this part of the video or the second part of the video or the third part of the video. Meanwhile, when you use a navigation hotspot, there's only one part of the video that you're sending the student to. So let's say that you want to send the student to the end of the video. We're going to do this just after this question. I just scrolled past this question to the point where I want to insert this. So let's say I want to insert it at 25 seconds when the question has already been answered. Um, and now we add this navigation hotspot. Here we go, click here. It's gonna appear at 25 seconds and it's gonna last until 35 seconds. You can pause the video, you cannot pause the video. I think that if you're using a hotspot, you don't want to pause the video because in the case that the student does not want to skip, ahead, the video just keeps on playing. But if they do want to skip ahead, the video is just going to stop playing here, skip ahead and start playing where you want it to start playing. We're just going to use time code here because that's what it's most useful for. And the go to is going to be, let's say, actually, I forgot how long the video is. 
but I think it's about 1 minute 20 seconds. Let's just say that it is. Um, here you can change the shape in which it appears. Set the rectangle, I think, is a pretty good one. Um, and you can write the text. Skip to. end and um, this is for read speakers um, basically if you're going to what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that this hotspot is above a text just like we did before with the anchor so we're just going to say skip ahead we're going to click done there you go this is going to be our little spot and now if you remember this is the same as the anchor you have to add some text underneath it and say skip ahead. ahead. It's going to be that. Whoops, sorry, that was my mistake. I should have used it as a poster. It's important to use a poster here. You don't have to pause the video. Don't remember that if you use a poster, the entire text is going to be displayed, which is what we want here. I want the visual background to be, let's say, yellow. There we go. The time is slightly different. You want to make sure that the text underneath your hotspot is the same as the timing on the hotspot. And here we go, we have the text now. Let's just adjust it to the size that we want. The size, I guess. And now we will adjust this hotspot to fit in with our text. A good thing here, I think, is just to bring it to the front, just to make sure that it's easily noticeable. There we go. This is our little skip ahead button and it's gonna skip to one minute, 20 seconds. Close enough. Um, that's it, I think that's actu that actually covers everything. So let me just sum up. If you want to add a label, which looks like this, so it's in this little black square, use this function. If you want to add text, use this function. Text can be in two forms. It can be this little clickable hotspot, which is very useful if you want to just add additional information to a part of the video or you can have it as a poster. Uh, make sure to use text as a poster if you're using it as a base for a navigation hotspot. That's what we did in the end. There's tables you can insert, there is a link you can insert. Um, very useful if you want just to send the person to, I don't know, a YouTube video or Khan Academy or something like that. Image can again be inserted as a button or as a full image. Um, there's all of these different types of questions which we've already covered in the last video. You could use whichever one of them, um, but make sure to um, either use it as a button or make sure that the video stops playing when it shows up if you add it as a poster. That's the one thing that I want you to really remember. So if you use it as a button, just leave the video playing, don't pause it. But if you decide to use a poster, um, make sure to select the stop video option. And yeah, that's it. Um, let's see how it works now. So let's save and display. And here we go, this is our save and displayed video. Um, to play it, simply click play. Let's just... H5. Okay, so here, I'm just gonna stop for a second. We can see the text that we um, posted in form of a poster. This is our label. Right here, it's always gonna be displayed. Um, when the students are going through this and they can see is a brilliant and easy way to press on the plus Even if there's no text written next to it So even if you don't decide to label it, there's still going to be this button and they can press on it and they're gonna see this extra text As soon as create interactive online content for students to a little Plus here. This is an image again. The video stops playing We're gonna close it for their own pace Let's see how this link works um, if you remember correctly, we left it so that when the picture is displayed, um, the video is paused, and as you can see, the video automatically paused. But please don't use that feature. Just don't, don't ever use the pause feature unless you're making uh, questions, which you're not shaping in form of a button. So the way that we did it, if you remember. Now let's check out this link. Let's keep on playing, and you can see that as soon as you leave 
the video because he clicked on the link. This is the right link, of course, hyphy.org. The video will stop playing. Now we close the link, come back, play. It is a free open source content framework which is based on JavaScript. Okay, However, this does. There we go. This is, if you remember, the crossword. So this is where the student can choose to view one image or the other image, whichever they want. If they choose image one, it's going to take them right here down to this bookmark. And if they choose image two, it's going to take them to the end. So let's. If, again, if you're using something like this, do pause. Do make sure that the video is paused. Meanwhile, if you're just using um, that navigation hotspot, which we have embedded, I think, somewhere here, this little button, um, in that case, keep the video playing. But here, the video is paused, and we have decided to skip to image number two. And how big the video can be. Hence, if you wish to use H5P to make a resource, this cursor back to the question so if you remember after this crossroad that we created here we created a question of coding experience to create amazing content and if you wish here's the little bookmark that just appeared first image change if the student clicks on bookmarks the student can see all of these different bookmarks that are stated here and to get to the bookmark the student just has to press but now we're at a question, and as you remember, uh, because we didn't form the question as a button, because if it is formed as a button, there's just going to be the little button with a question mark on it, or um, the tick and the cross on it. In that case, when the student will click on that little button, the question is going to appear and the video is going to stop. But because we decided for a poster, which I think is more useful when you're trying to, um, I don't know, set up a quiz or something like that, um, the trick is that the video has to be paused, so make sure to tick off the pause video statement. Um, and here, there's uh, two statements, correct and correct. Let's say we decide for the correct one, yay. And then as soon as you press continue, the video... To use H5P as a plugin for Moodle, feel free to either create your content on h5p.org. We press on it, bam, we skipped ahead. If you can, s you can see that we skipped ahead quite a lot. So that's essentially it. And then if the video would play till the end, we would get to this little summary, which is something we didn't yet do. But here the summary um, is basically of all the questions answered, and we did get one question in the presentation, and we answered it correctly. So that's great. Um, the last thing, I think, is if we go back to edit, uh, let's wait for it to load. remember correctly there's a summary task so let's let's add this just so I can show you what it looks like we're gonna have these little statements so it's just the best statement so the student has to choose the correct statement statement one is correct just as it was um, before statement two okay let's make it harder and add a statement three you know. um, there we go So this is the first set of statements. Again, just you can make as many of them as you want, uh, but always the first set statement that you write in here has to be correct. Um, H5P is going to mix them up later, so don't worry about this. But let's just type one, two, just so you can see that multiple quizzes can actually be added. So you can add as many statements, which is which adds up to as many questions as you want. That's it. There we go. Just gonna make sure that everything's okay. The score setting is fine, and it has to display three seconds before the video ends. And that is it. There we go. We scroll down, and we make sure to save it. Save and display. And now let's see what that has done.
check out the summary now. You need to click OK here every time you hit the save. Again, sorry about my connection. It's not the best. playing just to get back here we go and when we will get to down to the three seconds before the end what's going to happen is that this little button here is going to appear open summary dialog and when the student presses it we get all of these statements so choose the correct statement here oh, sorry statement one here we go we were right and then the second question if you remember correctly we did another one again is the first one that's correct here we go, we got two out of two. Continue. And the second one, how to create a... Now, at the end, we're going to get a little summary of everything. So up here, we get all the questions that we inserted in the actual presentation. And if you remember, there was just this one, this little statement here. And then in the summary, and there was two questions, and we got a score two out of two. So that's it. We've created our little video. It's going to appear in our Moodle page where we actually entered it, here we go, this is the one. And here's the description of the video, if you remember, we decided to display it. And that's it, thank you so much for your attention. Um, and yeah, we'll turn the editing off, and I'll see you in our next tutorial.